けはります。ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ Uh, normally, we did it last time from the kayak. Today, we're just going to walk around the bank. It's just going to be a little bit easier. It's a beautiful morning out here on the pond. It's nice and calm, no wind at all. It's starting to get chilly.、Uh, fall is just now kicking off. And there's one eating right They're feeding right now. So, let me go ahead. I'm real bad in the past at showing you guys what I'm using. So, today, we're going to be throwing a Vex and Spinner rod. This is actually their inshore rod. Uh, I haven't bought a freshwater one yet. I need to. We got a 3000 series Cast King spinning reel. And most importantly, we got 20 pound braid going to a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. And let's see if I can get a good close up of that. I don't know if the camera's wanting to focus in on it. But this is a Biospawn Exo Swim、uh, swim bait. This is what they call their Gobi color. But it's perfect for.、Uh, Looking like a little bluegill, like a little juvenile bluegill. It's got some purples and green pumpkin and that, tan, that light belly on a 1/8 jig head. So it's just a very simple presentation. We can catch any size bass in the pond on this. That way we get a good overall、uh, feeling of how they're doing, how they're growing. So let me go ahead. We'll put this camera away. Oh, that's another thing too.、Uh, my GoPro Hero 4 finally. Took a crap. I had to order a new GoPro, so we're getting an upgrade. We're going to be getting a GoPro Hero 6. So I apologize for if the footage and everything looks a little wonky because I got to use the session on my、uh, ball cap here. So we're going to be using the GoPro session, so at least I got that as a backup. And I may use the DSLR just kind of get an overall shot. So anyway, they're already feeding. I'm dying to go catch some fish. Let's see how big these guys are going. Okay, well, I have to say this because I thought the GoPro session was recording. I guess this won't act stupid too this morning. Well, I just caught a bass. He was 0.61 pounds and 11 and 3 quarter inches. So that's the first bass in the morning. Too bad we couldn't get him on camera. But hopefully, we can get the next one on camera.、So、there's that. Just beyond the pallet, I ain't scared them quite yet. Let's see. Got him. <laughs> He nailed it, too, man. Hopefully, he didn't swallow it too bad. A little bit better one. Fish number two weighs 1.14. 1.14 for fish number two. He measures a little over 13 and a half. Here he goes. Sometimes you can jig this grass like that one. Oh, he broke my line. How the heck that h a p p e n Got it. I got him. Woo, it's a big one. A little big one for the pond, anyway.
Yeah, that's a nice healthy fish. That's more of the size we're looking for. That's how big the stocked ones are now. Healthy, healthy bass. Hold still. Hold still, sweetie. I'll get you. Turn you loose. Oh, she was hooked good. You want to need some sore throat spray. Nice fatty. Pretty bass. All right, let's hurry up. Get her weighed and measured and all that good stuff. Ooh, I was off. 1.56. Fish number three, 1.56. Well, it's a hair over 14 inches. What's good about taking these photos of these fish, you can go back and if you pay attention to the markings, if you caught any of these fish before, hang on, man, I got a fish on right now. God dang. God, a bass just tried to take my pole in the water. Don't leave your baits in the water. Even if they're sitting still, they apparently they like them. Now he's got me all hung up. Maybe they're waking up, coming out to eat finally. There's one. Uh oh. Okay, there's the bait. About to say. Hold still. You don't think they want this bait, do you? Don't seem like one. I'm glad I brought these pliers. you make this don't leave your bait in the water some guy like this will come by and steal it 0.81 and twelve and a half like I said we gotta I ain't gonna take a picture we gotta hurry up and get him back so we can stop this bleeding It'll be okay. You guys look around, you see I got this standing timber and I got old concrete and blocks and stuff all around here, which is great hiding places for all the little yearling bluegill and minnows and so on. So that's why that big bass is hanging out here. Now the pond's two feet low. We've had a dry spell here lately. Or else all this, this is kind of like a flat up here too and they love to spawn right here. But hopefully we'll get some rain soon and bring this back up. But looks like they're doing all right. There's a bass. Feels like a decent one. Let's see. I said that before. Sure do fight. That's for sure. Oh yeah, that's a decent one. Should work. These are what we're looking for, the original stalkers. Hook right in the cheek. Don't leave your bait in the water. Another pound and a half here, but they're healthy. For a summertime fish, that's a chunk. One point four five. That's what I said on that other one. No, no, God dang it! I knew she's gonna do that. We don't want you getting all dirty. Let's see if 
14 inches. Okay, she's eager to go back. I'm eager to put her back. And keep growing. There she goes. So we're gonna go to the one-eyed wonder. Strike in 3XD and green crawfish. Now that the sun's up higher, it should drive these bass deeper to kind of cool off and get out of the sun. So I'm gonna throw this 3XD over some sunken Christmas trees and some ledges and a culvert and see if anybody's hanging out there. I'm gonna bounce it along the bottom and see what we can get. There's a fish. Feels like a fairly decent one. No, he didn't get off. Man, like a wet sock. There he goes. No, he's just coming in with me. Little guy. Fish on the crankbait though. It's going to be a little damaged, buddy. But you should be okay. Slim. He's not super skinny. He's dark, though. He's been hanging out deep. I already wet the table and wet the board. This guy, 0.55. He ain't very big. Calm down. If he'd hold still, he'd make me look like a liar. 0.66. Catch a lot of last year's hatch. So you're in the piglet trough. He quit flaring his tail up. 11 and 3 quarter. Yeah, 11 and 3 quarter inches. Need your mama and your daddy. That's what we need, buddy. Well, here we are, day number two. We are bound and determined to get eight bass. I guess this has to be a multi-day video. Anyway, new day, new bait. I got a small jerk bait on, it's kind of purple and blue. I believe this is a lunker hunt. I got this a long time ago in a mystery tackle box and believe it or not, I haven't used it yet. And we're gonna be throwing it on a Vexen strike back rod. Now this rod has a little bit more glass in it, and this is a 610 medium heavy. See it's got more of a bend to it, but still has plenty of backbone. And I use this for a topwater and my jerk baits. That way it allows the bass to take it, and being a 610 I can make pretty accurate casts with it. So we're going to throw this jerk bait around and see what we can get on the old Vexen. There's a fish. Ooh, a nice fish. He's a fighter. Either had to be one hanging around that log. Yeah, fairly nice. If you're wondering, yes, I did bring a pair of pliers. <laughs> careful I'm dealing with bass and treble hooks not bad looking about average for summertime he weighs 0 0.83 0 0.83 I gotta lock it that's right then put it in the box So wet him and get some water again through his gills. He is 13 inches. Right on the money, 13 inches. Now see if he's gonna behave. So 
so I can get this picture. Nope. Stop, stop. Ow! Look, you got yourself flipping all in the dirt. You're gone. Okay, I guess I'll have to take a screenshot. It just will not behave. Alright, there's number seven, though. Well, at least I know one bass that'll eat. Ain't that right, Steve? Yeah, Steve's hungry. Look at all the snails. Guys, I think I might get a shell cracker to put in here just to kind of keep the snails down. Alright, Steve, hang on. Dang, the worms have done a job on this newspaper. I'll find you a nice juicy one, like this one. Clean it off. Alright, Steve. There you go, buddy. See? Totally just there's one bass that'll eat. There you go. Red got one too. Steve's still hungry. Alright, I'm going for Steve. Swoop. Got it. Alright, fellas. Don't eat the grass. Like this one does. I want to see something. Pretty much hitting whatever hits the water right now. Let's see if he's actually looking at it. Hey, he ate it. <laughs> kind of. I don't think you like the taste of it. It's bluegill food anyway, Steve. Well, that's going to wrap it up, guys. It is getting hot out here. Uh, as many of you know, summertime bass fishing is pretty hard, especially when you got temperatures in the 90s. They they're not as active, there's not much oxygen in the water. But anyway, uh, from what I'm seeing in the data that I have gotten from the seven bass that I caught, what I need to do to improve their growth and make them all little fat softballs and get them growing is, it looks like I need to focus more on habitat. And when I say habitat, I'm not just talking about sinking Christmas trees and pallets. I need to get some uh, aquatic vegetation. The reason I think the bass are so skinny it's cause they're having to work harder for their food. There is plenty of food in there. They're just having to chase it, which means they're having to burn up metabolism versus if they had somewhere to hide and they can ambush their prey. I think that's why some of the bigger stocked bass that I put in there still have nice, fat, healthy bellies on them. Uh, like the bass I lost and broke the line, like I said, he was a big bass. And the reason I can tell that is cause he's been hiding in that grass. The feeder goes off, brings the bluegills to him. He darts out there and grabs one, just sits back and gets fat. So I need to make that happen around the pond. A lot of the banks are bare, so I need to get some aquatic vegetation, some more logs, you know, timber, more ambush spots for bass. And I uh, probably need to sink some deep water structures too, so I really need to start focusing on habitat if I want to really kick these bass up and get them going. And I need to save up money so I can get a pond aerator for summertime like now to kind of stir that cooler water up off the bottom. That way I don't have that uh, stratosphere of hot and cold water. So I'm going to go inside, get some air conditioning, input all the data into my little system I got, my little graph that tells me if they're growing okay or, or if they're too skinny for their size. You know, you take the uh, weight and the measurement and it tells you how much they should weigh for how long they are. But that's neat here and over there. If you guys want me to do a separate video on that, I'll be more than happy to. I'll try to figure out how to screenshot everything and record it. But as always, I'm Joe from Dismore Outdoors, and we thank you for watching. Remember, we do more in Dismore. Y'all take care. Dismore Outdoors is proudly sponsored by Bruiser Baits. Fish the best. Vexen Rods, strike first with Vexen. And Real Gear, make fishing your style.